43. Psalms 43. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's uh, meditated on in, in line with that word. Hallelujah. It is, uh, I mean, it's something very, uh, very touching and very powerful. As, as how the psalmist uh, is speaking to us uh, through that word. He begins. Uh, Okay, if you, if you look at the whole scenario, the whole the Psalms, the Psalms, Psalms begins with a, with, a very, uh, with a very painful note, with a very painful note because we see the, uh, the, the, the Psalmist is, is surrounded with all troubles, he's surrounded with the storm, he's surrounded with all the problems, hallelujah. In the midst of all the storms he's writing, he's, uh, he's calling upon God, he's looking to God, hallelujah. He is looking unto God for, for deliverance. But if you go down, you will see how the very, uh, he, starts with the diff he starts with the note of asking God to deliver him, to vindicate him and to deliver him from all his troubles and to show that why, why are you Lord so silent, why are you so far off, I am going through these storms but I can't see you. I'm going through these troubles, but I don't see you. You are silent, Lord. We are, you are so far from me, Lord. You, I, I'm looking to you, Lord, for my help, but I can't see you. I can't see your help. I'm seeing the enemy overwhelming me. The enemy is uh, uh, having an upper hand over my life. Uh, I see the enemy is trying to uh, take charge, taking control of my life. And I'm overwhelmed with that troubles. I'm overwhelmed with these problems. So in the midst of all this, he starts off in this manner. He says, Vindicate me, O God. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Or oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. See, the, he, he was, who had his eyes fixed on God, his eyes was, was fixed on Jesus, the, the, the Lord God of his life. Hallelujah. He is looking at God. And he's, he's pleading his cause. He's saying, I'm surrounded with these ungodly people, with unjust men. Today, uh, we are, many of us are surrounded, we go through these situations in our lives. We are, we are, we are, we are being surrounded with all the enemies. We are surrounded with all the problems. We are surrounded with all the storms. And we are looking to God for help, but we don't, we see God being silent at times. There are no answers coming from God. There is no response coming from God. And we look to him and we are asking him, Oh Lord, where are you? Oh Lord, where are you in this situation? In verse 2 he says, For you are the God of my strength. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? He, in, in verse 2 he says, uh, he, he has this mind which is divided. His heart is divided now. You can see the divided heart. He starts off in verse 2 by saying, he, he speaks faith. He says, Oh Lord, you are my strength. So he's speaking faith, he's speaking life. But at the same time, he says, Why do you cast me off? Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? So in, in, this is, uh, it, it's like, it's not an a, a undivided heart, but a, a divided heart. If, 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 this is a very cry that you see in Psalms 86, 11, in Psalms 86, 11, verse 11, he is, uh, the psalmist is asking the Lord, teach me your ways, O Lord, teach me o, your ways, O Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I will glorify your name forever. Hallelujah. You see, the cry out here, the cry is, in, in spite of all the storms, in spite of all the enemies that surround him, he is, he is looking to God and is asking, Lord, I, 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 I do not want to be caught up in the, in the, in the midst of all these storms and, and lose my focus from you, Lord. Take that I can that I'll be uh, that I'll be un, uh, 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 divided in my in my in my looking at in my gazing at you that I may gaze at you and gaze at the problems that I'm surrounded with. So here is uh, he's he's asking the Lord, O oh Lord, teach me your ways, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Hallelujah! Teach me your ways, so that I may rely on your faithfulness. See how beautiful he is, 
asking because if unless and until I do not ask, I will not receive. I need to ask, Lord, what is your way? I, I need to know your ways, Lord. Your ways. See, uh, to the children of Israel, God re revealed his deeds. But to Moses, he revealed his ways. To Moses, he revealed, God revealed his ways. Because God, Moses was interested in following the Lord. But the children were only interested in knowing his power. They did not want to see anything more than that. Today, how many of us want to be delivered from our troubles and our problems, but we are not looking at, a, at, at what God is looking at from at God's perspective, to be precise. And from God's perspective, what is God looking from us? What is God asking from us? How what is what is our response to God in that situation that we are going through, in the storms that we are going through? How am I? What is my standing? How do I stand? And what is my response to God? And how do I respond to the situation? Because that, that, that's where that's where it makes all the difference. God will put you in the midst of a storm. God will put you in the midst of all the troubles, and He will He will He wants. To, he wants you and I to respond in the way that is pleasing unto him. That's why he is, the psalmist is asking, teach me your way, O Lord. How do I respond, Lord? What is your will for me, O God, in this situation? What is your will? See, may, uh, 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 Mother Mary was in the midst of a, in a she was almost, she was, uh, uh, what do you call, betrothed to Joseph and she was about to get married. And she was already there in a situation where she is already engaged. Now in, that, in the midst of that situation, she, she faces a, a very intriguing situation, a very intriguing one. Because you, I mean, an angel appears to us and says to her that you are going to be a mother and she is she's just a virgin. Imagine a, a, a scenario such, that, such like that. Where you are you're caught up in a situation where you do not know what to do, what, where to look to, how to, look, how to, do, how to make decisions in this moment, what decision I need to make. Because it's not, any, not an ordinary situation. It's not an ordinary situation at all. It's an extraordinary situation where you are caught up in a moment where you, can, you have to make a life and death uh, 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 decision. Because it's a life and death experience, uh, uh, decision that we need to make. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it's a price that we need to pray, pay. Hallelujah. It's a price. It, it doesn't come easy. Because the walk, to walk with God is not... It's, it's, uh, people take it so lightly and they just walk around just the way they think it is. No. There's much more than that. Because God will never allow you in a situation where He will He wants He expecting a response from you. How do you respond to that situation? When Daniel was uh, was uh, and when when these three men, Abednego, Shadrach, and Meshach, were called to bow down to that idol, it was life and death. Daniel was called to bow down to an idol. It was life and death. There was no two way around in it. Either you do it or you're going to die. Now what is your response to that situation? How do you respond to that situation? Today, here, here the psalmist in Psalms 43, he starts off by saying, Lord, deliver me from this trouble, Lord. I'm surrounded with this situation. I'm surrounded with these problems. I'm surrounded with the enemy around me, Lord. And you are my strength, Lord. Lord, why are you allowing me to go through this kind of a situation, Lord? Hallelujah. Why are you not delivering me from this situation? But the the next, the verse 3, the verse 3 is very important, Psalm 43, verse 3. He says, Oh, send out your light and your truth. See, the, 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 the twist is here, the twist is very important. We need to understand this because the crux of the matter, the crux of this whole uh, word is very important because unless and until I don't take hold of the word of God, I will never be able to experience the freedom that Christ is bringing me into. Hallelujah. See, the psalmist is in the midst of all the storms. He says in verse 3, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them, what should lead me? 
your light and your truth what is the light god's word and what is the truth the revelation of his word hallelujah he says in the midst of the storms he is not telling god lord i am in the midst of the storm you deliver me from this trouble in a, in verse 3 it is a total different scenario he is asking god lord give me your light send me your word open my eyes to see your lord i don't want to just see things in the physical realm i see the enemy around me the troubles around me and get, be perplexed and be be carried away by the troubles that i am facing but send me your word lord let your word light, let your light shine upon me lord through your word what what do you what are you looking from me master what are you looking from me well, how do how should i respond to this situation see uh, uh, saint paul writing in the in 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 the prison writing to to uh, in the prison if you read philomen philomen uh, chap uh, there's only one chapter there's only one chapter in philomen uh, chapter 1 verse 6 chapter 1 verse 6 he is writing from the from from the prison philomen is uh, it's in the it's uh, i think it's just before hebrews i believe philomen chapter 1 verse 6 he says i pray hallelujah thank you lord i pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing you have in christ hallelujah oh wow this is something powerful he says that i pray that you may be active in sharing your faith what is the faith that you have today he says you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing that you have in christ that we have in christ do you do we know that we have all the good thing that we need in life which is in christ jesus in us this is this is saint paul writing to philomen from the jail from the prison he saying i have every good thing that i need in life even so in the midst of all the pain and the sufferings that he has in the in, inside the prison that is that pain that suffering does does not overwhelm him from the joy of knowing who he is in christ that pain that suffering that he is in the prison being uh, being caught, being uh, caught in being uh, put in a dungeon he is put in a dungeon with all the chains there are chains in his hands chain in his feet but joy is in him hallelujah there is there is there is that peace inside of him there there, there is that knowing he says he said that you should be active in sharing your faith what is that faith that you are in christ that that christ is in you the fullness of god in you hallelujah that christ is heaven that christ is that glory hallelujah that christ is is life inside of you hallelujah that joy inside of you hallelujah he is a peace inside of you hallelujah that that goodness is in you hallelujah that faith that has come that makes you that you are a child of god hallelujah now what is that faith that you are saved that you are redeemed that you are that you are a child of god almighty that you are a citizen of heaven that is that, that faith that is in you that what you have that understanding that is in you is good enough to make you to me to to make you that person that god has called you to be because if i do not have this understanding in me if i do not have that revelation of who god is in me i can be in i i i, I can be in a situation i can see that situation and cry in that situation and complain in that situation and uh, look to god and ask god when are you going to deliver me lord when are you going to set me free from this trouble so lord and and do not see god in that situation do not see what god is looking from you and what is the revelation that god is giving you in that situation hallelujah thank you jesus that's why saint paul would say in the philippians 4:4 he says rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice what is that revelation that 
he had. Uh, even in the prison that he would write that. Uh, that rejoice in the Lord all the ways, all the time, in all situations. For that is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So what is the will of God for me? That I know who I am in Christ. There is a freedom that is inside, not the one which I'm looking from outside. Because the outside is not what is important. What is inside is important. What who I am from inside. That I am, a, I am seated with Christ. That I am one with God in the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, that the world and all the things of the world cannot separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. See, that's why the psalmist writes, Oh, send out, oh, send out your light and your truth, Lord. Send your light and your truth. Because, because in, the, in this situation, that you lead me, oh God, you will lead me. I do not want the situation to lead me. I do not want the people outside to control me. I do not want the problems outside to control me. No. I will not be moved by the problems. I will not be shaken by the problems that are outside. Because I know my God is in, with me and for me. Hallelujah. He says, oh, send out your light and your truth. Send out your word and your revelation of your word, O oh Lord. That they will lead me. Because God's word will lead you, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. This is a prayer that uh, St. Paul is praying for, uh, for the Ephesian church. He's saying, may the eyes of your hearts be enlightened. May, this is again from the prison. This is again he's writing to the church of Ephesians from the prison. He says, may the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know. The word is important you to understand. Know. That knowing is very important. That you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. What is the hope that he has called you? Hallelujah. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Oh, that your eyes are fixed. Your eyes are fixed to heaven. Your eyes are fixed to the one who has called you. Hallelujah. He who has gone before you. Hallelujah. It is he who has chosen you. Hallelujah. You belong to the Lord. You belong to the one who has called you. So before, before anyone could have you, 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 are already have, you are already of God Almighty. You are already of Christ. You have to understand that it's no longer you who live. It's Christ who lives in you. Your life no longer, you do not live. No, it's not you who live. It's Christ who lives in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then he says in, in the same verse, in third verse, let them bring me, let, this, let your light and your truth bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Hallelujah. Where, where, where do I need your word and your revelation to bring me? To your, to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Amen. In the midst of my storms, in the midst of my troubles, I want your word and, your, and the revelation of your word to bring me into your presence. Not anywhere else, Lord. I want you to bring me into your presence and into your holy presence, in your holy dwelling, O oh Lord. We, I should not, I don't, I don't want myself to be anywhere away from you, O oh God. You are my heart's delight. You knew, O oh God. He said, one day is far greater than a thousand days elsewhere else. One day in the house of the Lord is far greater than a thousand days elsewhere. Hallelujah. I better be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than be in the midst of all the wicked. Hallelujah. Riba mando kobo Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want your light and your word to bring me to your holy presence. So let my meditation be pleasing unto you, O oh God. Let my meditation, O oh God, be pleasing. I do not want to meditate on the problems that I am facing and ask when you will deliver me, Lord. No, I will not. I will not ask because I know my God is my deliverer. He shall deliver me. The righteous has many problems, but the Lord delivers you from all of it. Hallelujah. The righteous will face persecutions, but the Lord shall deliver you from all of it. But what is my what is my meditation today? 
What do I need? What do I ask from the Lord? Lord, let your word bring me, O oh God. Draw me, O oh God, to yourself. That I may worship you with all of my heart. That I may seek you with all of my heart. Yes, Lord, as Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha was in the, in the kitchen, Mary was doing a better job. Hallelujah. Then in verse 4 he says, he's asking the Lord, Lord, let your light and your truth bring me, O God, to the altar of God. Bring me to the altar of God. Why he's asking, Lord, let your word and your, the revelation of your word bring me to the altar. Where, where, who is the altar today? The altar is Jesus. Hallelujah. What is, what is on the altar? The sacrifice. What is on the altar? The atonement. And what do I place? I place my, 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 my frailties, my weaknesses, my sinfulness. I ask the Lord, Lord, I failed you one way or the other. Lord, I bring myself at the altar of your presence. At the cross. That is, the very altar is the cross. I come to the very cross. I come to the very feet of the Lord. And I say, Lord... I need you in my life. Cleanse me of all my, purge me, Lord, of all my sinfulness, of all my evil, O oh God. And Lord, help me, O oh God, to be the person that you call me to be. I want you to make me the person that you call me. Because I know life is in you, O oh God. That you have forgiveness, Lord. Lord, Lord, you forgive me of all my sins. I repent of every sin that I have. Because every time when I when I sit and complain and pro and cry over my problems, I'm committing sin, O oh God. I'm going against your will, O oh God. I'm uh, I'm going in the wrong direction, O oh Lord. Lord, let your word and your truth, Lord, bring me, O oh God, to the place where I will be crucified with you, O oh God. That my life will be no more my life but your life, O oh God. Hallelujah. Unless and until I am not crucified. He says, St. Paul says in 2 Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, that I am crucified. It's no longer I who live. It's Christ who lives in me. The life that I live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. It's the faith of God Almighty is placed in you. That faith that can move mountains. Oh, come on, my brothers and sisters. You are crucified. You are dead to this world. Hallelujah. You are alive to God right now. Come on. So I'm asking his word. I'm asking God, his word to shine upon me. To enlighten me, O oh Lord, with your word. And, your, and, your, and the revelation of your word. The truth, Lord. Jesus said, it is the truth that shall set you free. Hallelujah. It's the truth that shall, shall, shall set you free. Hallelujah. My word is life and their spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And their life. So what am I asking today? I'm asking God's word, his ways to be known unto me. I want his ways to be made known to me. Because once I know his ways, I will walk in his ways. And I'll do what is pleasing and acceptable unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he says, to, to, then in verse 4 he says, to God my exceeding joy. He says, Lord, that I want your word. To, to en en envelop me so much uh, that I that I may have no other joy but my joy to be in you, O oh God. That I may not find my joy in anything else but only in you, Jesus. You are my exceeding joy. You are my exceeding joy. Hallelujah. What is our joy today? Do we joy? Do we rejoice in going to? Uh, yeah, Going to everything else in this world today. The world is offering so much. of So much is there in the world today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Jesus. The word of God says. The word of God says. What has light to do with darkness? Jesus. What has light to do with darkness? Today we need to make decisions. Which are. Which are. Which are very hard. I'm telling you. Hard is not the word. Because unless I don't take the decision of dying to myself and living to God, I can never. I can. He says, unless and until you, uh, he says, and if anyone loves his father and mother more than me, is not worthy of me, says the Lord. Unless and until you do not love God above 
the situation that you about a, 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 about anybody. Maybe it's your own brother. Maybe it's your own sister. Maybe it's your own ones. They may, if they are the ones who are going to take you away from God and bring you to a place which is uh, uh, which is ungodly, I will not. I will not become a part of it. Hallelujah. So what is your joy today? You know, it's very hard. I'm telling you, I had to make decisions in my life. I had to make hard decisions. And for that matter, I, had to, I, I, I was, I, I'm rejected. I'm rejected. I'm, for, I'm, I'm looked down and I'm, I'm considered as a good, good for nothing. But I, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so happy that my joy is in God. In God. I rejoice in Him. I do not partake with the things or anything and everything that the world is calling me to walk with. It's, 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 it's a very thin line. The, the word of God says the way to the kingdom of God is very narrow and very many, many will not be able to take it. Many will not be able to take it. Many cannot walk in it because it's a decision that we need to make. For that we may, we, may be, we may be cut off from our own family members. Own family members will reject you. Your own brother and your sisters will reject you. They will despise you, they will scorn you and they will say all kinds of evil things, say all kinds of things against you because you, you, are, you, are, you are not following the, their ways. The world and all the things of the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Father, thank you, Jesus. For what is your exceeding joy today? What is your exceeding joy? So he is calling, he is asking the Lord, Lord, let your light be in me so much that my joy will not be in anything else but in, only in you, Master. That I may seek not to find joy in anything else. But you will be my exceeding joy. Because when I have that exceeding joy in me, then I will be able to praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I may yell at you and scream at you and say, tell, praise you, thank you, Jesus, come on, praise Him. But if that joy is not inside of you, you will never be able to praise Him. You will never be able to glorify Him. Your heart will never be able to lift up the, that name Jesus. Because if He is not in the center of your joy, if He is not the center of your lives, you cannot, you will never be able to experience that joy. And you will never be able to praise Him and thank Him and glorify Him. Because everything else will crowd you. Everything else will come and take hold of your mind and your heart. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I need to, I need to look into myself and see... Where, where do I stand? Where do I look? Where am, where am I standing? Am I standing in that holy, holy place that God has called me to? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 See how beautifully he started off asking God to deliver him from all his troubles. I mean, there is nothing wrong in asking God to deliver you from all your troubles. There is nothing wrong in asking God, Lord, I am in trouble, Lord, deliver me from this trouble, deliver me from these problems that I am going. There is nothing wrong in it. Even the people in the world, they ask this. But what's the difference between me and the people in the world? The people in the world are only carnal. They are only looking at the surface. They are looking only at the physical situations. The physical thing is reality for them. I, once I am delivered from my, from my troubles, then I go back into my own life. But if I am spiritual, if I am spiritual minded and I seek and I seek only God and I ask God and I want God in my life and I want to please God in my life, I will, I will look beyond the physical that I am, the physical situation, the physical problem that I am facing, I look beyond that because it is in the spiritual where God reveals His glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
So kaya lang marami. In the fifth, in the fifth verse, in Psalm 43, fifth verse, he says, now he is speaking to his soul. He is speaking to his soul. See, it is very important for me to speak. Unless and until I don't, I, 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 once, once I know who I am, I need to speak to myself. I need to speak. Once I speak to God, I need to speak to myself. I said, he's here is asking, he's, he's saying, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? He's speaking to, his, to himself. He's speaking to his soul. He's saying, why are you so cast down? Why are you so troubled in yourself? Why don't you put your hope in God? Hallelujah. See, there, you, it's very important to understand that you are a spirit having a soul living in a body. You are a spirit having a soul living in a body. So, in your spirit being, God dwells in it. God dwells in your spirit being. When you are baptized, you are born again in your spirit. When you receive Christ, you are born again in your spirit. Your spirit is born again, but your soul needs to be converted. There is a conversion that needs to come into your soul. What is a soulish realm? It's your mind, it's your emotions, your feelings, all that you have, all that you think, that, that is the soul realm, hallelujah, your mind. Because that's why he says, to be renewed, be transformed. In Romans chapter, 11, uh, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, uh, St. Paul says, being transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's a continuous work that you keep going, hallelujah. That you offer your life as a living sacrifice, being transformed by the renewing of your mind, not to be conformed to the world. So here he is talking, the psalmist is talking to his soul. He's telling his mind. He's telling to his emotions and to his feelings. Hey, why are you so emotional? Why are you so go, going in the wrong direction? Why are you so disturbed in yourself? He's telling why, why you are not being, why is your mind getting disturbed? Don't you know that your hope is in God? Don't you know that your life is in God? Don't you know that your God is a miracle worker? A wonder worker, miracle working God and He is for you and nothing can separate you from the love of God and God shall deliver you from all your troubles. So, quieten yourself. So you are speaking to your, to your soul. Quieten yourself. You need to speak. Unless and until I don't speak to myself. I need, I need to preach to myself. I preach to myself. I keep, pre I keep talking the word of God to myself. I talk the word to myself first. I get the word into my spirit, into my soul, into my mind and get my body in line with God's word. Unless and until I don't bring my body in obedience unto Christ, it will not come. I'm telling you, it's not easy. This body has taken, I, I beat my body so much, not for, with a belt or something, I beat my body but I bring it, I, I, in, my, in, the, in the realm of the spirit, I bring my body into obedience. I put my body into obedience. Like a horse, in, with every bridle, you need to bring the, uh, the horse into obedience. Otherwise it will not come into obedience. It's a over a period of time, we bring ourselves into that obedience. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. If this mind is, is, is the place where you will find a lot of battles going on. So much so that you will not be able to hold it. But that's why we need to fill ourselves with this word. We need to fill ourselves with this joy. With, this, with, with more and more of God in our lives. That's why meditating his word is so important. Reading his word is so important. Because unless and until I don't get, I speak his word, I read his word, I meditate on his word, I will never be enriched in my spirit, I will not be enriched in my, in my, in my soul and I will be so disturbed in myself, I will lose my peace, I lose my joy and I want to give up on my life, give up everything, I don't want anything, I want to commit suicide, I want to give up on my marriage, I want to give up on my relationship, I want to give up everything. Because I'm not, 
I have not given myself fully to what God has called me to have. He says, look to me and you shall be radiant. Amen. Look to me. How do I look? I look to his word. I, I read his word. I meditate his word. I'm looking at his word. Now the word says uh, you are blessed. The word says that you are anointed. The word says uh, that I am with you and for you. When I read his word and I take his word and I speak his word. So I'm blessed. I'm anointed. I'm loved by the father. And the father calls me by name. I'm a cow in the palms of his hands. Oh the Lord is with me and is for me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, who can be against me if God is for me? Hallelujah. Even if I go through the waters, he will be there. Even if I go through the fire, he will be there. Hallelujah. Oh, rejoice in the Lord always. Come on, soul, you shall rejoice in the Lord because he loves you, because he cares for you. This is how Mahashikelebe. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm blessed in my coming in and my blessed in my going out. This is what I do. This is what I speak. I say it. I'm, I I say it again and again. I take this word. Riba makobo shata bayalaba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I take this word. Even when I was working, I would take the Bible with me. I will sit. I will take any time I get a free time. I will open the Bible and I will read it. I take it into my spirit. I want God in my life. I want His word in my heart. Oh, there's nothing that is greater. There's nothing more beautiful than having Him in my life. I want the fullness of God to dwell in me so richly that, that everything within me be God in me. Hallelujah. Oh, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. There's nothing in this world that I shall desire for, that I shall desire for Him in my life. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Manda Lokobo Shataba. Never to give myself to free to anything. No, I'm not for free. I'm not for free. I, great price has been paid for. The blood was shed for me. I'm not for sale. The devil cannot have me. The world cannot have me. I'm not for sale. I am begotten of God. God has taken me for himself. He has taken pride in receiving me. He has made me his own. He says, you're mine. You belong to me. I'm yours, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Rama Shokabayalaba. You shall not take your life for granted. You shall have your price has been paid for. You are priceless in the eyes of God. So you shall renew your mind. You shall take your mind captive and bring your thoughts into captive into obedience. And tell it, Lord, I am yours. I belong to you, Master. Take me and use me for your greater glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that, 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 that today we call her blessed. You know, the, she, she, to become, to become that, uh, the virgin to become that mother of the savior was not easy. But, no one didn't understand. She was in the temple all the time meditating on God's word. Looking to God, looking to his word. And when the angel appeared, she was prepared for that. She was prepared for it. She was prepared for it. That's why she could say, Beat unto me according to thy word. Beat unto me according to thy word. It's not easy to say that word unless you have the word inside of you. Unless until, if you don't have the word inside of you, you will not say, Oh Lord, beat unto me, Lord, according to thy word. What is that word? Beat unto me according to thy word. What is that word? If that word is not in you, you will never be able to say, beat unto me, O Lord, according to the word. You say, oh, where am I? Why am I in this storm? Why am I in these troubles? Why am I in these problems? Why and why and why? This why will never be answered. You will be in that why. And that question mark will always be there. And that's a snake. And that question mark will always be going around you. And you'll be entangled in that question mark. Stop asking questions. Start looking to God. Start, start, start looking at the Lord, the one who has called you. Because He is faithful. He shall deliver you from any troubles that you are in. But you shall glory in God. You shall rejoice in that. Today as I spoke to you, as He said, Oh, send out your light 
in your truth, O oh Lord, that I may be led by you, that I may be led by your word. Hallelujah. Psalmist says in Psalms 119, verse 105, O oh Lord, your light, your word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never you shall be, never you can be depressed. Never you can be loose, lost in this world. Come on, you can never be defeated in life. You are not forsaken. You are not abandoned. You are not rejected because God loves you. God loves you because God loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Let the whole world reject you. But you are loved by God Almighty. Hallelujah. And God has plans for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans for a great future. So you shall not be moved by what the people say, what people come, come and talk to you, but you shall lift up your heart, lift up your countenance and say of the Lord, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, you are my joy, you are my peace, you are my song, you are my deliverance, you are all that I need, you are more than enough for me. With you on my side, I can be more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ because you are the one who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift your heart to the Lord and be radiant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You shall not, you shall never be put down. Hallelujah. Because your joy is in knowing who you are in Christ. That's why St. Paul says, even if I am chained, but the word of God is never chained. Hallelujah. The spirit in me is rejoicing all the time because his word is in my heart and I'm rejoicing in his word. I'm rejoicing in his presence. Even if you are in the dungeon, in the pit, you are still rejoicing in his presence. You are rejoicing in his love because his love is wherever you are, his love is there, hallelujah. Wherever you are, his presence is with you, his joy is with you, his peace is with you, his love is with you, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, no one can take that joy out of you because you have set your heart on him, hallelujah. You have set your heart on the Lord, hallelujah. And your joy is your, and the joy of the Lord is your strength, hallelujah. Come on. Oh, Father, thank you, Father. For your glory is here in our midst, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, you know, God appeared to Abraham. Abraham, he said, fear not, Abraham. Genesis 15, one, 15th chapter verse 1. Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. God is telling Abraham, fear not. I am your shield and I am your great reward. If you, if you understand this, take the revelation of this, that God says, I am your reward. <laughs> you did not deserve it, but you received it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God has come into your life today. You. Today, you are, if you have believed in Christ, you have received a reward from God. Hallelujah. You received a gift of God. Hallelujah. You have received a blessing from God Almighty. Hallelujah. So, so that you are found in God. The enemy cannot find you. <laughs> the enemy cannot find you because you are found in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what St. Paul would say in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. When he had, when he had a thorn in his body, he, see, he asked the Lord, Lord, can you take this thorn? The Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. He says, I rejoice all the more in my sufferings. Why? I rejoice in all my in, in all the more. Why in my sufferings? Why? Because in my weakness his strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my weakness, his power is made perfect in my weakness. Hallelujah. So I'm I am rejoicing all the more. Hallelujah. So what is your joy today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you, Jesus. We worship your holy name. We glorify your holy name. 
We exalt your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. For you are our joy. You are our strength. Hallelujah. Come on, say it. Come on, say it. Hallelujah. You are my exceeding joy, Lord. You are my exceeding Lord. Exceeding joy, Lord. Hallelujah. You are my light and my salvation, Lord. Lord, let the revelation of your word come to me, my my Lord, my God. Let the, let the understanding of your word come into my heart, Lord. Fill me with your wisdom and knowledge and understanding that I may rejoice in you, Master. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the enemy come against me, Lord, but I know you are with me and you are for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit is doing mighty work in, the, in our midst right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for working.